Let's talk about the determination of speed of sound in air. There are two methods. One is the direct method and one is the indirect method or the echo method. The first method or the direct method is not very available to us because it requires a starting pistol. It needs a stopwatch as well and one measuring tape. So get a guy to stand quite far away, maybe a few km away, uh, let him hold the starting pistol and the other guy stands a few kilometers away with the stopwatch. Make sure there's a few kilometers of open field between them. So firstly, measure the distance S between the two experimenters. Experimenter A would fire the pistol. The pistol will do two things. It emit a flash of light and it will emit a sound. The flash of light is seen instantly because light moves extremely fast. However, the sound would travel quite slowly in the air as compared to the light. So, experimenter B would see the flash on the pistol first and that's when he starts his stopwatch. Then, he waits until he hears the accompanying sound of the pistol bang and then he stops his stopwatch. This will get him the time interval T between seeing the flash and hearing the bang. Then, we can calculate this. Speed will be distance over time. Therefore, the distance S divided by the time interval T will get you the speed of sound in air. So some precautions to take. The experiment should be repeated a few times and the speed of sound for each experiment should be computed and averaged. This would reduce a random error. Secondly, this experiment may be slightly affected by wind through the open field. So the two experimenters could exchange positions and repeat the experiment, which means this would cancel the effect of wind. Now method two is the one that we use more often to measure the speed of sound in air. This one is a bit more complicated, so please try to focus. Normally, we use two blocks of wood for clapping because they produce the best clapping sound. It will be a sharp sound. Then, we have one stopwatch and one measuring tape. So, then we need to find a large flat wall. Quite a lot of buildings will produce this wall. And then you need to stand a certain distance away. This distance can be a little bit shorter than the previous one, but it doesn't need to be a few km. This one can be a few tens of meters. So the guy goes over here and holds the two wooden blocks and he claps the wooden blocks. Clapping sound would travel over and be clearly reflected by the large wall and come back. When the guy over here hears the clapping echo sound, he would clap again. And he would try to clap exactly when the echo reached him. So it would be clap, clap clap, 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 and he will continue this clapping. So in summary, firstly we measure the distance S, and then the experimenter makes a sharp clapping sound by knocking the two blocks of wood. Then another guy standing maybe here, he would start the stopwatch at one of the claps. This guy of course keeps clapping. And then once the guy that is using the stopwatch measures the time taken for 50 claps, he presses stop. Speed will be the distance traveled over time, which will be the number of clap intervals times 2 of s. That will be the total distance traveled by the sum. And then we divide all of this by t that taken to travel all those 50 claps of sum. Some precautions of course. The simplest precaution is to just to repeat the experiment several times in order to get the average speed. So in summary, an echo is a reflection of sound. Reverberation is the effect of prolonged sound due to the merging of many echoes with the original sound. Two methods of measuring the speed of sound in air, the direct one and the indirect one.